Nico, Nico, nine. C5 on J. Let's go. Put that old school. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. With that being said, before I get into the video, I think one subscriber said that that intro doesn't make sense on the one life, one chance part. What, but basically, my cousin wasn't telling when he got the tattoo and it's a message with my family. Because right, they were trying to say that I just because I got out of prison is my second chance. Um, I don't look at getting out of prison as a second chance. I look at it like just an opportunity to fix what I did wrong and fix my life because, you know, I can't you know, right my wrongs for what I did in the past. I made those mistakes. If I had a second chance, don't you think I would just redo it and not go to prison and not go to jail and not be a gang member and not try to be this prison gang leader all my life? I would have did that. A second chance to me means I could read. I could redo it all over again. And that's what I'm not meaning. When I mean by one life, one chance, Bro, once we die, we die. So whatever you do on this earth, whatever it is that you apply yourself towards, whether you make so many mistakes, you know, it's all trial and error. Life is to me trial and error. I made so many mistakes, but I'm fixing them and I'm doing better and I'm correcting my behavior. I'm maturing in my growth and my characteristics. So to me, just coming home wasn't a second chance to me. It's I, I made it home. You know, God made it, allowed me to make it home. I didn't get caught up. The DAs didn't pick up none of my cases. And and to me, that's just my way of saying to everybody, you only got one life to live. You only got one opportunity because we tomorrow ain't never promised. That's what I mean when I say one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So let's get into the video. Now, before I show the video, I'm going to blur it out as much as possible. But you guys already know, 59 underscore J-A-Y-Y on Instagram if you wanna see the video. Because lately I've been blurring out all, like I'm trying to be just a journalist, so to speak. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, find these stories and, and give you guys these articles, do the basis of these articles, give them to you guys, and then sure enough, post the pictures. You know, some people don't wanna sit there and, and Google something and read the article and see the pictures. This is more entertaining than that. So I post the pictures, I just blur them out, but I, to an extent where you can still see what they are, Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. YouTube be tripping and I'm like man I see bigger platforms that get our bigger numbers get bigger money or bigger names and they be posting music videos with dudes with just you know putting in 30 rounds and drums and clit and sticks and I'm like they, are, they, they showcase it a weapon but when I put a picture of a weapon of something that's been confiscated by evidence by, by law enforcement Age restriction, ad suitability, YouTube shoots me this big old email. I'm like, bro, I'm tired of combating YouTube. I've been combating YouTube forever already. I'm, I got sometimes these videos that I post with with prison, you know, content, prison removals, prison stabbings. Dude, I upload it a whole 24 hours before it gets uploaded on YouTube. I just run it through the algorithm and run it through YouTube's automated system so they can either approve it or just say, mm mm, mm mm. And then when they do, mm mm, I, that's when I start. I'm on my laptop arguing with YouTube why it's suitable for all audience members. Man, they're making life difficult. But anyways, I'm going to blur this video out for you guys. It's the best that I can. But like I said, you guys know where to reach me and I'll shoot it to you guys. Everybody on my IG knows I already, you know, I, I bless. So this is a video. Y'all remember Spider from Monrovia? Him and his uh, co-defendant Stomper, his homie from his hood. They're the ones that took out Mexican Mafia member. Stabbed this Mexican mafia member right here, Tonito, took his win on the yard with the promise that they were going to get made and get membership for what they did, right? So we both know, both Spider and Stomper are on SNY now, had to drop out, got a green light sanction on them, even though Mexican mafia members went behind their own brother's back and pretty much said, hey, go ahead, go ahead and take out one of our brothers since you guys got access to him in exchange we got you guys. You guys can have his territory. Sold both of these young Sureños a dream. Well, Stomper lasted a little longer because he had protection from Popeye. And I already did the video and all that. You guys can go watch the video and get more details about what took place. Spider, on the other hand, 
had nobody to protect him, had no Mexican mafia willing to defend him, willing to raise their hand and speak up on his behalf. So his, his sanction, his green light was a lot more easier to carry out. Well, it's him in this video and the Mexican mafia member, Alfie Sosa. You guys are very familiar with Alfie Sosa. Alfie Sosa sitting on the bench with them and then young Sudanios walk up to stab Spider from Monrovia in the neck. Well, Alfie grabs him by the shirt and tries to hold him as the Sudanios try to stab him. They get one or two good ones in, but Spider from Monrovia managed to get away. You know, he had quick reflexes, cat reflexes. He had a good reaction. Once he felt the, you know, the piercing of the weapon in his neck, he ran. And he ran as fast as we could. Yes, the Sudanios chased him, and that's where the footage gets cut off from the prison cameras. But you can see the Southerners walking that direction as they continue to fight in, in the event that if they can't take him down, more Sudanians are going to jump in. But you see Alfie Sosa, Mexican Mafia member, walking towards that yard, or walking towards the removal, should I say, just watching it. Which is a very rare occasion you hear about these so-called big homies actually doing their own dirty work for once. Because he actually tried to set it all up, was talking to dude, and what a, what a better way to set somebody up, right? Hey, the big homie wants to talk to you. What what young northerner, southerner is going to turn that down? Oh, damn, I got to answer to the big homie. All right, I'm going to go over there and talk to him. Because if he doesn't, he says, man, I ain't got no time for that phone. I'm playing handball, bro. I'm about to ace it right now. Stabbed. Nah, I forgot that I got a phone call. Stabbed. Hey, man, I got to go to visit right now, bro. They just let me out for visit, man. My, 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 my old lady right there waiting for me, my Ruka stabbed so he had no choice but to walk up to Alfie and talk to him and that's one of the biggest setups one of the biggest betrayals big homie lured him in I need to talk to you spider from Monrovia goes over to talk to him and when he sees that southerner from the corner of his eye walking up from behind pulls out the knife really easy to grab him by the front of his shirt while old boy hits him from the back prime example of getting hit from the back getting stabbed in the back I said it plenty of times just some active don't care to accept the realities that it can't happen to you. But thankfully, thankfully, he got away. Thankfully, it's not another murder that we got to talk about. California Prison News publishing an article. Spider got killed, spider this. So he got away from the removal. Bro, if this ain't one of the biggest examples to all you youngsters out here watching, or are you just active gang members who are only here to hate, Stomper and Spider are the biggest. Stomper and Spider story is one of the biggest examples, one of the biggest stories that needs to be heard. Why? Because that'll just teach you how they'll utilize you. Everybody's familiar with the story. Everybody on YouTube that watches my channel and has watched other prison channels that knows about prison politics, that's pretty informed with prison, even from their own homies in jail, everybody knows their story. How they got utilized to blast a Mexican mafia member in their eyes. Hey, man, taking out a big homie for a big homie will make me a big homie. Taking out a big homie for a big homie is going to get me the recognition that I need in here in jail to get power. To be the top camarada. Why? Because both of them are doing life in prison. What else do you have to live for in prison other than stabbing the next man, making a name, becoming a big homie? That's the only thing you can do to make something of yourself in jail is stabbing another man, stabbing somebody of a high caliber to make your name and your reputation bigger than what it, what it used to be, just a regular foot soldier. You can learn a lot from Spider and Stomper's story if you guys really take heed to what I'm saying and what other people are saying. How you can be utilized for somebody else's benefit and how easy it is for you to be disregarded on behalf of somebody else's benefit. See, the reality of it is they got green lighted because Obviously, they broke a cardinal rule. No Southerner is supposed to ever hit a big homie. First message right there. That just shows you, you're always going to be less than them. So as long as you're less than them, you're to no value other than money and putting in work. That's it. So for any active gang member, and this is coming from my perspective as well, because I was that one dude that one time. All they want from you is money and what you can do for them. So as an active gang member, you got to ask yourself every day, as long as you're part of a neighborhood and you're in solid and you're in good standings, ask yourself, what am I willing to do for them? Go ahead, you know, weigh out the pros and cons, the balance and weighing factor. What am I willing to do for them? How much work am I willing to put in for them? How much money am I willing to contribute to them? Ask yourself all those questions 
and see your own limitations. Because if you have any limitations or any restrictions, trust me when I tell you those limitations and restrictions ain't going to be nothing. Ain't going to be nothing. Because the moment you disregard them and tell them no, trust me, you will be blackballed. There is a such thing in prison as being red flag and blackballed to the point where you get disregarded. And if you get disregarded, they're going to start looking for reasons to get rid of you on the yard. Because the way they see it, some of these uh, NF members, Mexican Mafia members, look, I guess you could say back in the 80s, 90s, when I talked to a lot of older homies, they were all about teaching youngsters the education, the program. The mentality has been different. It's changed now. Now these dudes are so old, so stuck in their old ways. And now that they're free and now everybody's talking about them and now that they see the fear in, it, um, in prison administration and they see the fear in the eyes of their young soldiers, like, man, these are the guys, man, these are the big dogs. These are the big homies right here. Dude, they're thriving off that fear right now. They're thriving off the fear that now that they got access to phones, now they got access to more videos, now they're in contact with more people on the streets. There's a lot more fear in them streets now because anybody can get killed with one phone call. Back then it took letters, it took legal documents, it took years for a kite to leave Pelican Bay to hit the main line and from the main line hit the streets. So you had years to maneuver, you had years to move around without getting caught, without getting green lighted, without getting blasted or you had an opportunity to get out the way. It took years, now it just takes one simple phone call, 10 minutes. See, they're thriving off that fear because they know damn well as much as you active gang members want to portray yourself as being active and solid, and that's more meaningful than just being a regular man, a regular dude, and just being loyal to yourself and loyal to the people that actually matter to you, they're thriving off that. They're getting rich off that. But if you notice, right, I ask you guys those same questions, which I know some of y'all won't answer. I'm asking you guys those questions. What are your limitations? What are your restrictions? How far are you willing to go? What are you willing to do? And if you're capable of answering all those questions and all of them have the same answer to a certain degree of what you can do for them, I promise you, as if you thought it out, none of that thought process was even there to say, hold on real quick. What am I willing to do for me? Or what am I willing to do for me? That way I don't get caught up in their mess, in their business, caught up in their lives and their web of lives, so to speak, because like I said, you had Mexican Mafia members tell these two youngsters to go blast somebody, but didn't tell their brothers that they sanctioned these two to go blast somebody. So when their brothers start asking these Mexican Mafia members, hey, bro, do you guys sanction that? Nah, bro, we didn't do that. I thought it was that big homie. So these big homies are pointing fingers at these big homies. They question those big homies. Those big homies deny. Now everybody's in a web of lies where they're finally saying, you know what? All right, to make matters even better, we'll just go ahead and blast these two fools and get rid of them. Because in reality, the cardinal rule is they, they weren't supposed to touch another brother. And that's what I'm saying. When you get caught up in this gang culture and this gang lifestyle, you're not doing nothing for yourself. None of this lifestyle is going to benefit you. It's always going to be for the benefit of a street gang, the benefit of a neighborhood, the benefit of a big homie, and the benefit of a prison organization. None of this, you can't be selfish in this lifestyle. Everything has to be selfless acts. You got to do it for other people. So when you're doing... 25 to life or you catch an additional 10 years, you catch an additional strike or you F off your release date and you can't go home and you can't get family visits no more and you can't do nothing for yourself to make life a little bit more meaningful in a prison system and in a jail cell. Just remember, all that time that you're doing for them, all them struggles that you got to deal with, you're the one that has to endure it. So when a big homie tells you to catch a case, if you get sentenced to 20 years, does he get sentenced to 20 years? No. He's already doing life. He already messed up his freedom. Don't think for one minute that man's worried about you and your freedom. Like, damn, the little homie ain't going to see the see the light of day for 20 years. Don't think, don't think for one minute that that big homie's sitting there like, damn, the homie's doing 20 years. My little youngster's doing 20 years. He just forfeited his freedom for me. I owe him something. Nope, not at all. Doesn't cross his mind. Because at the end of the day, we're the ones that are going to do the jail time. At the end of the day, as you've been seeing in the last past two, three years since these big homies been now and a lot of news media has been hidden and a lot of YouTubers been doing a lot of coverage on prison aspects of, of what's going on in prison, none of these big homies are stabbing their own big homies. None of these big homies are actually taking credit for what they did to the next man. It's so bad that they'll tell a southerner to do this and do that and not even tell a southerner why. 
they're doing this and doing that to that man. They keep it all under wraps and they keep their own politics under wraps so that way Southerners can sit there and speculate and gossip about why this happened and why this happened and why this happened and they don't keep their own people informed. Just goes to show you, you're lesser than. You'll never be on their level. So I just want you guys to remember that for all those that are watching. When you decide to continue to be in this lifestyle, raise your hand. You're raising your hand for the next man. You're standing on business for the next man. You know, for once in your life, it's not wrong to be selfish. It's not wrong to think about yourself. It's not wrong to think about you and what's best for you. Make sure you think about that the next time you decide to get involved in some of these prison politics and these gang politics, street politics. Just remember, nothing in this lifestyle is ever going to benefit you in the long run. Unless you're doing life in jail and you inspire to be one of them, that's the best you're going to get out of it. But at the end of the day, losing your freedom just to have some status in prison, have an extra bag of canteen, extra soups. If that's more important than having a house, having a home, having a family to come home to, then you can make your decision on your behalf. Just make sure you don't get other people caught up in your mess and you start making other people lose their freedom on your behalf like they made you lose your freedom on their behalf. That's all I got to say with this video. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.